All right, everybody. So this is our next lecture that we're going to talk about the Reign of Terror and Robespierre. So we left off last time discussing how we got to this Reign of Terror. We talked about how the king was overthrown, how he tried to escape, how he ended up being put on trial, and he ended up getting beheaded. So he lost his head, and the Jacobins who was led by Robespierre, ended up taking control of France. So now we're going to talk about how Robespierre was trying to make France this virtuous country, this best ideals of the revolution and protect the revolution. And he's going to justify his reign of terror, which is going to see close to 16, between 16,000 and 45,000 people killed, all in the name of protecting the revolution. <clears throat> so. By the end of this lecture, we're going to be able to explain if the goal of the Committee of Safety was to protect the revolution or not. We want to be able to explain if this main goal that the Committee of Public Safety said was just to protect the revolution. They said this is why they're committing these acts of terror, essentially. So you'll see at the top of your notes that it starts talking about four years after the French Revolution started. France has now descended into a period known as the Reign of Terror. This period would be the third different government to take over since the revolution began. So we see that there's this timeline that starts with 1789, the National Assembly and the storming of the Bastille. In each period, we're going to see a radicalization of the French Revolution. So it's going to get more and more radical, extreme. So you see in 1791 was the legislative assembly, which was the constitutional monarchy. So they still had the king, but he was, uh, his powers were kept in check by a constitution. That was with the Lafayette. And then in 1792, we see the national convention, which was the Jacobins and the Republic, where they executed the king, got rid of the monarchy and said, we are going to have a republic. And then in 1793 was the Committee of Public Safety, which was Robespierre, and the Reign of Terror begins. So starting off with the terror starts to grip France. So those in power, now that the Jacobins have taken control, they feared thousands of enemies inside France, as well as foreign armies. So they were still, this was around the time that they were worried about having, they were fighting that war against the foreign monarchs still. And so many enemies, these enemies that they were so worried about, it included the peasants who were angry over the king being executed. So remember, we kept talking about how not everybody was for executing Louis the Sixteenth. So there was a majority of the lower class that was angry over the king being executed. Then we saw the elite priests who refused to accept the, gov the new government, which was part of that first estate from the beginning of this chapter. And then we also saw the rivals of the Jacobins in the government. So not everybody was for the Jacobins. They were the more extreme group. And so all of this is going to lead to a lot of mistru mistrust and a lot of issues for the new government. And so Robespierre assumes control. So Robespierre, he was the Jacobin leader who wanted to build a republic of what he called virtue or to make France the best it can be. And the way to do that, in his opinion, was to wipe out everything from the French past. So we talked about iconoclasm, which was, you know, destroying old relics that represented the king. But Robespierre wanted to go a step further. He's going to want to completely wipe out all of France's past and essentially start off new. So one big obstacle that he saw in this was religion. So he saw religion as holding France back. So they had this calendar. They wanted to create a new calendar that changed uh, to only having, to not having Sundays. And they ended up closing all churches across France. So he went all out in trying to take away any image of religion. So they destroy, they took away 
Sundays. They didn't have Sundays as a day anymore. There was just six days of the week. And they closed all churches across France. So essentially, Robespierre became a dictator of France for about a year. So he became a dictator in France for a little over a year. So we get to the Committee of Public Safety. So the Committee of Public Safety, this was the group of leadership in the French government. And they originally were set up as a group to help maintain peace in France. So they wanted to maintain peace in France. And their main goal was to protect the revolution from its enemies. So they said, we've got to protect all these gains that we've made throughout the French Revolution against any enemy. And so to help protect the revolution, they passed these extreme measures or laws that included imprisoning thousands of citizens and killing close to 16,000 people to protect the revolution. And so these harsh policies are what became known as the reign of terror. So this reign of terror grew from these harsh policies. So they said, you know what? We're trying to protect you. And in doing so, if we have to kill people that we believe are enemies, we'll do it. So who and what made the reign of terror so violent? This is where we start to see this thing on the left side of your screen called the guillotine. So the guillotine. So the guillotine was a method of execution which was supposed to be the most humane way to kill people. So they said, if we got to execute somebody, let's do it with the guillotine because it should be quick. But there are many instances of, you know, the blade not hitting in the right spot and it doesn't completely cut somebody's head off. So they sit there and suffer. There's instances of the thing falling apart. But I mean, at the same time, is there really a humane way to kill someone? Think about that. But anyway, so, this was their method of the reign of terror. So we see instances all across the country of France of guillotines being set up in the public squares in the middle of town and enemies that were uh, alleged enemies, I should, so I should say, were set up and brought to the middle of town, put on trial, and if they were found guilty, they were beheaded. So the energy for the reign of terror came from the lower class. So this energy that made it so violent came from the hatred of the lower class. So the lower class, they were so angry and so pushing for this violent method because they were the ones who suffered the most under the king. And they also feared any loyalist taking back power. So not only had they suffered the most under Louis the 16th, but they knew that they needed to keep pushing for the revolution, because if these people that were loyal to the king took back power, they were going to have revenge on the lower class. And so the Jacobins, they used the lower class's desire for vengeance, for revenge, and their fear of the loyalists taking back power to get the lower classes to fight for the Jacobins. So they used the the Jacobins used the sans culottes, as we mentioned in the last uh, time we met, as their personal army, so to speak, to keep this reign of terror going. So they were kind of like the henchmen. They were kind of like the sidekicks. So what was the role of the reign of terror? What was their point? What was the point of it? So as we kind of alluded to earlier, it was the way to defend the gains of the revolution. So Robespierre and the Jacobins saw the reign of terror as a way of not losing any, any of the gains that they had made during the French Revolution. So a way to protect everything that they have, all the changes that they had made so that it wouldn't go back to the way things were. And so they justified the terror by, they justified you know, this killing by suggesting that it helped everyone stay true to their original goals of the revolution, which was moving past the old regime or the king. So they said, you know what, it's okay for us to be killing these people because they were trying to make us go back to the way things were with the king. And we don't want to do that, do we? So it was the symbolic way of the state placing 
all the rights and power in one person's hands. So essentially Robespierre said, all right, we're in a state of war right now. If y'all will hand over your rights to me, I will protect you. And once this war or crisis is over, then you will have your rights back. So Robespierre is saying, you know what? Yeah, you have your rights, but just give them to me. Give up your rights for a little while. Let me get rid of our enemies. And then once everything's back to peace, we'll all be good. You can have your rights back. And so everybody agreed to this, but slowly Robespierre started taking away power from all the people by killing any enemies that he saw as an enemy or he suspected of being an enemy. So essentially he started to see everybody as an enemy. So slowly everyone starts to suffer because of this. And so between 16,000 and 45,000 people ended up dying during this reign of terror, during just a year, a little over a year. And 85% of those who died were peasants who were supposed to be the ones being protected. So by and far, the majority of the people that ended up dying were the peasants who were supposed to be protected in the first place. So this obviously goes completely wrong, completely falls apart. And so we see Termondor and the fall of Robespierre. So everything's gonna kind of fall apart now after about a year, like most dictators end up happening. So the military, they started to successfully fight back these invading armies, these other monarchies. So the military is able to defeat all the other armies that are trying to invade France. And that was great, but that's where this problem was for Robespierre. Because while they were in crisis mode, you know, while they were in a state of war, the people were okay with Robespierre essentially being a dictator because it meant that they were going to survive. They had to have one person making all the decisions during a state of war. But once the war was over, the people wanted their rights back, understandably. They wanted to have their rights back. They wanted to be able to you know, elect their officials and not just have somebody dictate to them everything that they were going to do. But like most dictators, Robespierre refused to give back power. And so he was actually arrested. So the same guy that started this reign of terror ends up being arrested. And so he tries to lead another revolution, but he was actually executed by the guillotine. So in a twist of fate, and it's very ironic, but the same guy that instituted the reign of terror and instituted the guillotines ends up being the same guy to lose his life to the guillotines. And so the following years between 1794 and 1799, so about five years, was complete chaos in France. Everything was falling apart. There was a, like multiple different leaders that rose up, tried to take power, was overthrown. The military is falling apart. Everything's falling apart. And this is what allows a general in the French army named Napoleon Bonaparte, who you probably heard of and we're going to learn about next, that allowed him to rise up, take power, and end the French Revolution. But he's going to start a whole new series of issues in France. So we see that the French Revolution is going to slowly come to an end by 1799, so within about 10 years of its original starting. But they're going to be in a situation almost in the same situation they were to begin with by having a king again with Napoleon. But just a quick recap, we wanted to talk about the main goal of this lesson was to talk about what was the goal of the Committee of Public Safety? And then did that goal actually protect the revolution and those who they were supposed to protect? So did it start off great? Did it end great? That's what we're gonna look at next time we meet together in class. So make sure to go back, listen to any other section you need to to get caught up, and let's have these notes ready by the time we come into class for our next meeting. All right, thank y'all.